The ABCC was established by the Howard government to do one thing. That was to attack and bust trade unionism in the building and construction industry. Simple, simple. It was a flawed institution at its inception. No, you cannot point to any other country in the world with similar legislation against their, against their citizens as the building and construction legislation introduced by the Howard government. And what you have to remember, this was part of the package of the Howard government. And you, I had listened uh, you know, intently uh, to Senator Michaelia Cash uh, in relation to her contribution. And I didn't hear one, one criticism of the conduct of employers in the building and construction industry, not one. And I'm not surprised because it stand up for the bosses and always have a go at the workers. That's the coalition's uh, position. You see, and the ABCC turned a blind eye to unlawful conduct on the part of employers. John Lloyd, the Commissioner, told me at estimates hearings that there was no sham contracting and corporate phoenixing in the industry. Well, what a load of nonsense. It didn't take very long when it was looked at seriously to find out the sham contracting that was going on. The ABCC has engaged in spin and deception to justify its own existence. It's shown a disregard for its obligations to be a model litigant. In essence, being a model litigant requires that the Commonwealth and its agencies, as parties to litigation, act with complete propriety, fairly, and in accordance with the highest professional standards. The expectation that the Commonwealth and its agencies will act as a model litigant has been recognised by the courts. There is a body of judicial criticism of the ABCC's conduct in litigation, which indicates that the ABCC has been guilty of serious lapses in carrying out its obligation to be a model litigant. I'll go to some of the examples of judicial criticism of this flawed, politically driven body. In the case Stephen Lovewell versus Bradley O'Carroll and others, where Lovewell was an ABCC inspector, the ABCC commenced proceedings in December 2007 against Bradley Carroll and the Queensland branch of the CEPU. After hearing the evidence, Justice Spender did not feel constrained to make some adverse comments about the merits of the, ABC, of the case brought by the ABCC. He observed, and I quote Justice Spender, the case as brought and as evidenced by the evidence yesterday was misconceived was completely without merit and should not have been brought. There is room for the view that if the Commission was even-handed in discharging its task of ensuring industrial harmony and lawfulness in the building or construction industry, proceedings not necessarily in this court and not necessarily confined to civil industrial law should have been brought against a company underground and its managing director and possibly another director. Justice Spender was referring here to the employer in the case, underground, setting up its employees as independent subcontractors. His Honour said that this arrangement, and I quote, is and was a matter requiring thorough investigation. Did the ABCC conduct an investigation on the employer? No, it did not an investigation that the ABCC was never prepared to undertake. Its sole focus was prosecute, prosecuting unions, blind to the unlawful behaviour of employers. Justice Spender went on to say, and I quote, the present arrangement in the present proceedings on the material presently available to me strongly suggests that the arrangements of the workers as independent subcontractors was a sham a bogus arrangement. It was an example of dishonest, fraudulent financial engineering by underground, whose intended purpose was to avoid payments made under the certified agreement which bound underground at the time. 
it was admitted by the ABCC and noted by his honour that the managing director is a foul-mouthed cowboy. Justice Spender said that if the conduct of the managing director of Underground had been engaged in by a union official, it would be extraordinary if that were not the subject of serious investigation and likely prosecution. His Honour went on to say, the promotion of industrial harmony and the ensuring of lawfulness of conduct of those engaged in the industry of building and construction is extremely important, but as one which requires an even-handed investigation and an even-handed view as to resort to civil or criminal proceedings, and that seems very much to be missing in this case. In his concluding remarks, Justice Spender said, the commercial arrangements that Underground entered into with its workers is a species of black economy, which unfortunately seems to exist in the building industry, and equally that is to be stamped out, if at all possible, in the payment to workers in such an ad hoc way as to avoid the obligations of income tax legislation and the superannuation legislation. It is not to be ignored or a blind eye cast when it is engaged in by the employers. So what Justice Spender has basically blown apart is this argument of some even-handed white knight building industry watchdog out there looking after the interests of the industry. It's clear that Justice Spender has bailed the cat, that the ABCC was biased, it was a political operation, it was set up by the Howard government to attack the trade union movement and to ignore the behaviour of employers. What could be clearer than a senior judge outlining these flaws and problems with the ABCC? Now, there are a range of other legal, legal uh, cases. If I've got time, I will come back to. But I now want to, to turn to this argument that was promoted uh, by Senator Abetz and, uh, and uh, Senator Cash, that somehow or other the ABCC on its own is responsible for huge improvements in productivity, huge savings to the government purse. You see, the ABCC and its cheer squad, as we have over in the other side of the chamber, have consistently claimed that its coercive powers have resulted in large productivity improvements in the industry. The claims, particularly those made in the Econtech 2007 and 2008 reports, have been hotly contested. Now, if you listen to the coalition speakers on this bill, they will stand up and say there was this independent analysis. Well, there's been no independent analysis. Econtech were, were paid and given the brief by the ABCC to tell the ABCC what a great job, supposedly, the ABCC has done in the building and construction industry. Senator Abetz and Senator Cash, and I'm sure Senator Back will come in and repeat the nonsense that there was a $5.9 billion a year benefit through the establishment of the ABCC. It is absolute rubbish. Murray Wilcox who looked at the ABCC, uh, again, a very highly, highly respected judge, deals with these issues at some length in his report at page 40 to 60. And I challenge, I challenge Senator Back to go to what, what the Justice Wilcox says and continue the nonsense and fabrications that the coalition are putting. Justice Wilcox asked this question in his, his October 2008 discussion paper. He says, the only possible justification of having specially restrictive rules for the building and construction industry must be that this is necessary to provide industrial peace and an acceptable level of productivity. Many people assert that the industry's present happy position in these respects is, a, is attributable to the BCII Act and the activities of the ABCC. Is there any hard evidence that supports that assertion? 
Well, after Justice Wilcox's inquiry, he couldn't find any. There wasn't an employer, nor was the ABCC able to justify the nonsensical claims that Senator Abetz has put forward about the so-called fantastic uh, performance of the ABCC. Like Anzac Day or Moomba, one of the rituals of life these days is the release of the Econtech KPMG of its latest modelling report to demonstrate the miraculous effect on productivity of the Stasi-like powers of the ABCC. The 2007 Econtech report estimated that, as a result of the BCII Act and the ABCC's activities, labour productivity in the building and construction industry had increased 9.4%. And we've heard these claims repeated constantly by the coalition that the CPI had been reduced by 1.2%, that gross domestic product had increased by 1.5%. This had apparently all been achieved in the 15 months between the commencement of the ABCC's activities and the end of 2006. On this, Justice Wilcox in his report on page 42, paragraph 5.33 for Senator Back's interest, notes that according to a report by Allen Consulting, productivity in the industry has been rising far more steadily and over a longer period of time than is acknowledged by the ABCC. And I quote Justice Wilcox, multi-factor productivity in the non-residential construction industry has displayed similar trends to those of labour productivity. The multi-factor productivity index measures industry's gross value added per unit of capital and labour input. Multi-factor productivity increases strongly through the 1990s and peaked just prior to the introduction of the GST. Following a short but sharp fall in productivity following the introduction of the GST, multi-factor productivity rebounded quickly and has been increasing since 2001. Now, others have had a look at the nonsense that you'll hear from Senator Back about productivity. And these, there was a, an analysis done by uh, a Professor David Peets. And his criticisms were particularly devastating because Econtech, in his view, had stuffed up badly. So all the arguments you hear about how, how well they've done has been analysed by Justice Wilcox, it's been analysed by really independent uh, uh, companies and it's been analysed by Professor David Peets and none of them come to the same conclusion as the Coalition or the ABCC. And what Peets shows is that Econtech had got its sums wrong. Rather than a 9.4% reduction in the gap between housing and non-housing construction costs, the reduction had been 1.3%. Pete's po pointed out problems with Econtech's efforts to compare actual productivity in the sector with pro projected productivity based on the rest of the economy, including, now, in spite of the absence of the ABCC and Royal Commission's construction industry productivity had surged far above predicted levels in the late 1990s. Pete's found that the cost comparisons between the domestic house construction sector and the, the commercial construction sector were deliberately framed so as to, to create the misleading impression that costs in the housing sector are lower because of the absence of unions in that sector. So again, the ABCC and Econ Econtech had con concocted up an absolute piece of nonsense in terms of productivity. And Pete's concluded, if ever there was an example of how economic modelling results are driven by assumptions and not data, this is it. And I've raised on a number of occasions in this place the, the, the assumptions that were put in. And what some of the assumptions were was that on some of the big construction sites, if there are no penalty rates paid, if you work 365 days a year, no public holidays, no annual leave, you work 24 hours a day, then you can gain all, all these increases in productivity and, and increase the, the, uh, the, the, reduce the costs in the industry. Sure, if workers become slaves, it will be extremely, extremely cheap.
to build any, uh, any construction uh, in the building and construction industry. But you see, we are not slaves in this country. And apart from work choices and the ABCC attempting to push workers' wages and conditions down, we've always had a view that if you go to work, you should be treated fairly, you should be treated well, and you should get a decent pay for the effort you put in. That's the philosophy of the Labour Party. Unfortunately, it's not the philosophy of the ABCC or the coalition or the work choice warriors on the other side of this chamber. And a year later, after these devastating analyses on this so-called economic modelling by Econtech, the ABCC released an update report by Econtech. The report quietly fixed the howling errors made the previous year, but kept the claims about massive economic benefits. Despite its wholesale overturning of the cost comparison data relied on in the 2007 report, it repeated the same fabricated assertions made in 2007, and you'll hear Senator back because his speech is already written, the, the nonsense is already written into his speech, and he'll run the same line that the ABCC ran, that GDP is 1.5% higher, the CPI is 1.2% lower, and the price of dwellings are 2.5% lower. The report defies all logic. No one who has looked at this in an independent manner believes these figures, except the coalition for their propaganda and their attacks on the trade union movement. That is the only group in the country, the coalition who love work choices, who love getting rid of penalty rates from workers, who love attacking the trade union movement, who in 20, 40 minutes of speeches on this bill have never once criticised the employers in the industry who behave badly. Not one criticism. And I challenge Senator Back, who's speaking after me, to deal with these criticisms of the economic modelling and nonsense that's been put up about the ABCC. I challenge Senator Back to deal with the judicial criticisms of the ABCC. Not only is the ABC acting outside what is regarded as good and proper legal procedures, they are fudging up figures to try and justify their existence. The ABCC is a blight on democracy in this country. We are the only country in the world that provides penalties against building and construction workers, ordinary Australians, that are worse than, than, than uh, penalties against terrorists. And it's because the coalition are work choice warriors they don't want workers to be in unions. They don't want workers to have a fair go. And their position is clear. This bill is a good bill. And get rid of the ABCC.